All right, welcome back. So in the last video, we were doing an example with uh, independent t-tests, right? A two-sample t-test. And in this video, it's the last type of t-test. And it just so happens that it is more or less kind of the strongest type of t-test we can do. Um, because we're using the same people, or the same group, or the same plot of land, or the same whatever. We're doing it, we are looking at it twice, right? Looking at it before we've done something and then after we've done something, okay? With the same group of people, okay? So, you know, we're comparing means of the same group, just at different times. So we're still working with differences, right? I should probably actually say that. Differences, right? Even though we are testing means here, but we're looking at differences mostly uh, in the paired and the two sample, right? But instead of me just saying like, here's what it is, let me, let me kind of recap what we've done so far. Because we've, we've pretty much hit, in this whole week, which is crazy, we've hit the big, the big blocks, the big foundational blocks of statistics, right? So with the one sample t test, going way back, right, to, <laughs> to either earlier this week or to uh, maybe an hour ago for you, depending on how and when you're watching these. Um, but with the one sample t test, let me, let me put that, one sample t-test, we've got one sample, right? So we'll call it x1, and it's some, whoa, it's some like column of data, right, whatever, it might be like this, and we're just comparing it, we're comparing it to some known value, right? We're trying to make inference about this based on the fact that we already know this, right? This, this kind of block that I have over here, one single value, right, okay? And then with the two sample t test, we have two independent groups, two groups made up of totally different things, right? Um, whether it is in the last example, honeybees and bumblebees, right? We could be males and females. It could be college students, high school students. It could be all this, right? It could be all this thing. But we have two different groups, two independent groups that are not related, right? At least uh, mathematically, statistically not related. And they can be the same size or they don't have to be, right? And so we're just trying to figure out, trying to make inference about these two, right? We're trying to see, you know, are they different? Right? Are they different after doing something, right? Um, so honeybees, bumblebees, right? Honeybees, bumblebees. It could also be placebo uh, and then experiment, right? It could be that too. But we're essentially looking at, you know, was it something that we did to the groups to see if they're different or is it just something innate about them, right? Um, so we saw the, you know, the experiment kind of classical side of research with that very first example for the two sample t-test, right? One was given a placebo, the other one was given a drug, right? In the last video, we saw something that was more innate, right? So bumblebee, we're not changing anything, we're just looking, right? We're seeing about bumblebees and honeybees, you know, that whole thing. That's, that's the deal with the two sample t-test. Now, here we are, here we are with the paired t-test. Why is it called paired? Well, it's because we have the same group. We have x1, right? Let's say that there's four people in it. And then we wait some time. We, hello, <laughs> we wait. Oh my God. We wait some time, right? That's a clock. And then we measure them again after some, after doing something, right? Or, or whatever, right? So that is, that's the idea with the paired t-test is that we do something, right? We, we either measure them before we do something, do something to them in this time, and then whoop, we measure them again, the same thing, right? For the same thing. Um, it could also be a plot of land. You can measure a plot of land, do something in between the time or shortly after you measure whatever you're measuring on that plot of land, and then go back a year later or whatever and, and, and measure that same thing and see if what you did in between here had any effect, right? So um, that's, that's actually pretty much that. <laughs> I'll even erase this just because that's the sort of general idea here. Um, but this, this is what's going on, right? So the sa one sample t-test, right? Taking one group 
and comparing it to something, right? Comparing it to something. Two samples taking two independent samples. So there could be four people in here uh, and then three totally different people in the other one, right? Um, and then comparing them and seeing if anything is different, right? Seeing if anything is different. And with the paired t-test, right, we take one group and then do something to them or take one plot of land, do something to it or whatever, uh, and then measure it again later to see if that um, intervention that we gave did anything. Okay, so that's the idea, right? That's the idea. We can kind of see this directionality here. Oh, boy. Okay, so that's, that's the idea. That is the idea. So how do we do a paired t-test? A dependent t-test is also what it's called. Let me write that too. It can also be called dependent. Dependent t-test. Dependent? Yeah. <laughs> Spelled right. Uh, okay, cool. So for the degrees of freedom, this process is all the same, right? It's crazy how similar these things are. But for the degrees of freedom, we are looking now, instead of the total number, right? So if we had, if we had group of people, whatever, and there's three, right, starting. We waited, we did something to them, waited some time, measured them again. Well, some people would say, well, the sample size, oops, well, the sample size is six, right? No, since we have the same person each time, this is the same person as here, same person here, same person here, right? That means that our sample size really is just three, right? So we have one pair, two pairs, three pairs, right? Um, kind of splitting it up by time, right? So, so in this case, the n would equal three, right? That's what I've got here, right? So the degrees of freedom is the is just n, the number of pairs minus one, which in this case would be two, right? Three, we have three pairs minus one. Very cool, very cool. Okay, okay. So another great thing about the pair to t test is that let me kind of go back to this picture too. The deal here with the paired t-test is that we've got the same people, and I'm, let me actually, let me write this, let me write it like this. Just to kind of denote, right, that it's the same person going over each time, okay? Um, and, you know, I would encourage you to write it like that too. Totally fine if you didn't. Um, I don't, <laughs> you know, this is just a visual. Um, but the nice thing about paired t-tests is that we sort of assume that this whole group itself has its its own kind of variance, right? It can this group, if we were to draw a histogram, might look something. It could look something like this, right? It could look something like this, whatever. It could look like a totally normal distribution, no biggie, right? But the nice thing about this is that we assume just because it's the same people that the variance is going to be the same on the other end too, right? It's going to be the same over here. Right, because we still have the same people. They're going to be behaving, you know, um, consciously and unconsciously the same way, right? The same way. Whereas with the two sample t-test, we've got two different groups, right? And they may they may have their own um, sort of distributions of whatever we're measuring, right? And they might be different, slightly. They might be slightly different, uh, which makes things kind of difficult. When you take higher level stat classes, you learn how to deal with those kind of things. We're not going to so much worry about it now. But the reason why we've done it in this order um, is because of, of the strength of these tests, right? There's a whole lot of um, stuff that goes unsaid here because we're only comparing one group to one known value, right? This is still fine. It's still okay to do. It's still legitimate. It's still a legitimate test, right? But it's not, you know, it's not super, super strong. It's pretty easily contested. So we go down to the two sample t-test and we say, okay, well, now we've got two groups, a placebo and a drug group or bumblebees and honeybees, or, or males and females, whatever it may be, you know, you've got, you're kind of accounting for more, but then behind the scenes, behind the scenes here, there's a distribution that might not be totally matched. So when, when we're kind of drawing them, overlapping each other, they might not be totally, totally symmetric, right? So that's why, whoops, that's why the paired t-test, right? That's the, the paired t-test is the strongest, right? Because you're one accounting for a whole lot of variation in the group, right? It's most more likely than not gonna be the same-ish distribution, right? Going from one place to the other, right? It just might be shifted downward, right? Or shifted upward, depending on what sort of thing you're doing, right? And it's the same people too. 
So there's a whole there's a whole field of statistics that is just this. Repeated measures is what it's called. Um, and sometimes we have tests where we do um, X1, some, wait some time, measure again, and then do it again, wait some time, right? And then so on and so forth. Okay, anyway, anyway, that's my, that's my rant. That's, that's why I've shown you um, these things in this order. Um, but the process for all these things is the freaking same. <laughs> it's, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Um, anyway, so the T stat, we're still looking, we're still making test statistics. We're still summarizing our data in light of the null, right? But we got some new sort of terminology here. We've been working with differences, right? So with the two-tailed, the two-tailed, the two-sample t-test is x bar one minus x bar two. Well, in this case, same kind of deal, same kind of deal, but d bar <laughs> just means, it's just the mean difference, right? Effectively, it's still x one, the bar, the, the sample mean of x one minus the sample mean again, right, next time. Um, but the way that we calculate the sample standard deviation is slightly different. And it turns out that if we wanted to, which I don't, <laughs> I do not want to, and I know that you don't want to either because this is a fast class, um, there's this whole process uh, in, in just calculating this that takes a long freaking time. Um, so we're not gonna do that because we just don't have the time. And I don't really care that you know, um, I do not really care that you know how to do the algebra. I care that you know how to interpret these things, right? And, and why they're important. Um, but it's just, this is just the um, sample standard, sample standard deviation of the difference, right? So effectively what we're doing, I am gonna draw it out just so you can kind of see. So we have our two time points split up and we'll say that this is x1, and then this is x1 again, but later. Later. OK. Um, so what we're doing, and I did not give myself enough room, Keter. Sorry. <laughs> so we're going to draw it out like this. Sample, sample, right. OK. Um, effectively, what we're doing is so we have x1, and then x1 again, but later, right? What we do, what we do is, so this might be one and this might be three. We would take the difference, so that's negative two, and then we would have to do uh, a little bit of extra math. We would have to square that four and then add up all of these things and then do a ton of work with both of these, right? So this would be, so this is x minus x kind of situation. This, minus, this is x minus x squared, right? And then with both of these values, we summarize them and do all this thing, and it's just not worth the time. We do not have enough time, I don't think, to really, to really, you know, get into the weeds there. I don't care. <laughs> I really don't. Um, I care that you know how to interpret these things. So I'm going to give you this and this. You don't have to go about calculating it. And then we just have the square root of the number of pairs. Easy peasy, right? So the standard error formula down here, very similar to what we've seen before. This whole T stat thing, also super similar. Great. And then, then, We've got the same same deal with the confidence interval, right? We have our statistic. It's the, the, the mean of the differences in the population. And then the standard error is just the standard deviation of the difference divided by the square root of the number of pairs. And then finding the t-crit, same way as everything else, right? Um, same, it's the same, same process as the one sample t-test because our degrees of freedom, degrees of freedom is just n minus 1 still, which is pretty sweet. And guess what? That's it. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to run through an example. I'm not going to show you the bird's eye view because this one is more or less sort of the easiest, the way that I'm, I'm um, setting it up for you. So no worries there. So uh, we've got an example, and I'll see you there in just a second.